All right, thanks for watching. And today I will prove the important fact that the composition of two continuous functions is continuous. So suppose A, B, and C, they're let's say subsets of the real numbers. And you have a function f that takes you from x0 to f of x0 and a function g that takes you from f of x0 to g of f of x0. And think of this as like taking layovers at airports. Then uh, there is actually a direct flight called g composed with f composition error that takes you directly from uh, x0 to g of f of x0. So g composed with f of x0. And what I want to show now, so fact, so if f is continuous at x0 and g is continuous at that point f of x0, then the composition is continuous at x0. Then g composed with f is continuous at the initial point x0. And I will prove this two ways, with sequences and with epsilon and deltas, but there is an even more awesome way, like a two-second topological way, but which I'll probably do in another video. We'll discuss about topological definition of continuity. So let me first do the sequence way. So proof. If one with sequences, so suppose xn converges to x0, then since f is continuous, we know that f of xn converges to f of x0. And um, since G is continuous, what we get is G of that sequence, so G of F of Xn, converges to G of F of X0. And again, the book is being weird about this, considering like domains and everything. But remember, when I write, uh, sort of f goes from a to b and then g goes from b to c, I assume that the uh, range of f is included in the domain of g. So we don't have to worry about this. And therefore, what do we get? We actually get that g composed with f of xn converges to g composed with f at x0. So what have we shown? We've shown that, hence, if xn converges to x0, then g composed with f of xn converges to g composed with f of x0. And therefore, g composed with f is continuous. All right, and now let me do the epsilon delta proof, which you'll see is quite freaky, but still, that's why I want to do this. So, here's the thing now. We have uh, three protagonists or three you know, main worlds that are going on. On the one hand, we have the world of f. So this is x, and if you want, this is f of x. Maybe the function f is continuous like that. Okay. All right, and then what do we have? Remember, x we can control. We can have it as close enough to x not as we want, and this is f of x. On the other hand, we have the world of G. And this is G. And here, you'll see in a second why, so let's say this is G. We start at f of x0, and then what we get is simply G of f of x0. And on, lastly, we have the world of G composed with F. So here again, you start with F of X in general, and you end up with G of F of X. 
On the other hand, we have the world of G composed with F, which is just a composition of the two, meaning that we start at X and we end with G of F of X. So it might be some weird function like that. And this means we start at F X naught and in the end we have G of F of X naught. And what we want, we want to con we have control over the input, and we want to have control over the output here. Now, here's what's going to happen. So, in, in other words, what we want, by choosing x to be very close to x naught, so some region of size delta, what we want, we want g of f of x to be inside the good region, centered at g of f of x naught, and maybe radius epsilon. All right, and basically what we'll do is both things at the same time. The idea is by letting x to be so close here, let's say less than delta, we can make sure that f is in the good region of size epsilon, oh no, of some size. We can make sure that f is entirely inside the good region here, just by letting delta be small enough. But here's the thing. Remember, the output of f is the input of g of f. So this brown bar here is the same thing as the brown bar here. So the idea is, if we let x to be so close to x naught, then we can make this region small, which means we can make this region so small that g is also inside the good region, g of f of x naught. Make this one less than epsilon. And therefore, what do we have? No matter how small this region is, which is here, by making x so close to x naught, we can make this region small and therefore this region small, which is precisely what we want. All right, and now we need to make this precise, okay? And what, we have, what we'll do, essentially we start with epsilon here, we find some small delta prime here, okay? And then this delta prime becomes here, and then using the fact that f is continuous, we can find an even smaller delta that makes this work. So, now on to the proof. After all those awkward pictures. So, let epsilon be given. Then, since g is continuous, at the point f of x naught, and it's very important, we need to make sure that in our definition of continuity to replace x naught by f of x naught, we know that there is, is some delta prime, we we'll use delta in a second for something else, such that if x minus x naught, no, uh -huh. not x minus x naught, but x minus f of x naught. I caught myself here. So if x, x minus f of x naught is less than delta prime, then then g of x minus not g of x naught, but g of f of x naught is less than epsilon. Now here's the important thing. This is true for all x. So it's true for your whole universe. So in particular, it's true for f of x, which might be a small subset of your universe. For instance, if a statement is true for x, it's also true for x squared but not vice versa. So in particular, what we can do, 
we can replace your x with f of x. So in particular, what do we get? We get that if f of x minus f of x naught is less than delta prime, then g of f of x minus g of f of x naught is less than epsilon. All right. However, now let's use the fact that f is continuous. So the idea is since f is continuous, we can choose x minus x naught to be so small that this actually happens. So since f is continuous at x naught, using the definition but with delta prime instead of epsilon, we know that there is some delta such that if x minus x naught is less than delta, then f of x minus f of x naught is less than not epsilon, but this delta prime. And in fact, I'm claiming that we're done because then with that same delta, if x minus x naught is less than delta, then we get uh, f of x minus f of x naught is less than delta prime, and this implies that by the first thing about g, we know that g of f of x minus g of f of x naught is less than epsilon. And therefore we're done and g is continuous. I'm uh, sorry, the composition is continuous. Hence, g composed with f is continuous because what did we have to show? We had to show that there is some delta such that if the input is less than delta, then the output is less than epsilon. All right, thank you very much.